So far, we've been using the onboard LED as a method of feedback, but this has been very limiting, so this morning we're getting an upgrade. We're going to connect the Pico to a terminal via UART. The UART protocol is extremely simple. And all there is, uh, you have two lines. You have a receive line and transmit line. And each line, uh, the character frame looks like this. You have um, your idle state is always going to be high. And then once, uh, once it goes low, that's called the start bit. And that will signal that uh, data is being sent. And then, um, of course, a 1 is high, a 0 is low. And after 8 bits, then uh, you should receive a stop bit, which is high and then it'll go back into the idle state, which is high. And sometimes, um, since I, I believe it's always going to be a fixed 8-bit uh, length, but sometimes, uh, especially in like if you're just sending over ASCII 2 characters, uh, ASCII 2 is 7 bits, so the 8th bit will be used as a parity bit. So um, this is usually used for like error checking or something. So like if you have like, like an even parity would be, um, if you have an even number of 1s, then the parity bit should be 1. And all this will, and this is just you. So, like, if the parity bit is not correct, that just tells us that the data is garbage. But um, it, that usually is unnecessary. The RP twenty forty has two UART peripherals, UART zero and UART one, and these can be connected at a number of different places. So UART zero has a uh, three places here, here and here, and UART one has two places here and here. So let's say if we wanted to use UART 1 at uh, these pins, we'd have um, GPIO pin 8 would be our transmit line and GPIO pin 9 would be our receive line. But for this video, I'm just going to use the default, which is UART 0, which is connected at GPIO pins 0 and 1. All right, I have my Pico wired up. So uh, here I have my UART controller. Uh, there, you can just pick these up on Amazon. And uh, pin 0 is wired to the uh, receive line, and pin 1 is wired to the transmit line. And uh, this wire doesn't do anything, this is just to keep the, uh, keep the board down. So before we can use the UART, and even before we can use any peripheral, we have to set up the peripheral clock. So right after we set up our uh, system clock, let's uh, set up our peripheral clock. So parry clock. And um, this is going to be at the register clock parry control. And we have to set, we have to enable it, and then we have to uh, select our source. So for this video, um, and this is just a generally a good idea, you should choose the crystal oscillator as your source. If you really care about speed, you can send it through the PLL. But um, I, th I think that's just going to make it more complicated since then you have to know the exact... Uh, frequency from the PLL. With the crystal oscillator, it's stable, you know the frequency. So this is the best uh, the best option, especially if you're using uh, multiple peripherals. So we already have uh, the clock read write address loaded into R0. So let's just load, um, load our enable bit into R1. And we'll have to shift that over, um, let me see, I have to shift that over 11 bits. So shift that over 11. And then we're going to add, um, let's see, if we want the crystal oscillator, we have to shift that over. So that's 4, shift it over to 7, so that's 128. So we just add a 128 to that number, and then store it. And the offset is going to be, um, let's see, 48, so that's going to be 18. So load 18, and that should be our, um, that should enable our peripheral clock. And once we have that running, we need to bring the uh, the UART out of reset. So let's um let's see subsystem resets right here. And we just care about UART zero. So that's going to be the twenty second bit. So um let's just copy our GPIO code and let's put it after the uh, the PLL reset. So we'll call this. UART zero reset, and we're resetting UART zero, and we'll just move a one into this, and then shift that over twenty two times, and that should bring our UART out of reset. Now, once we have that running, we need to uh, we need to have our function select with the GPIO. 
So just as we had to uh, select the CO when we're using the uh, the LED on the GPIO, we're going to have to enable uh, UART on our GPIO pin. So enable GPIO UART, and then um, let's see. So we go back to GPIO, which is section 2.19, uh, and then function select in UART is going to be our uh, second function. So Let's um, load that address in, and we're not going to need it down here anymore, just to be efficient. And then we'll move, uh, was it 2? Yeah, 2 into R1, and then store that in both our, um, let's see, so GPO control. So we want pin 0 and pin 1, so that is an offset of 1 and 3 words. And that should be, um, let's see, GPIO 1, GPIO 0, and this is uh, UART. So this should um, enable, that. this should configure our GPIO to use the UART at those pins. So to actually configure the UART, uh, they, uh, the documentation provides this really good programmer's model. So uh, we already did the first two steps. We deasserted the reset and we enabled uh, the peripheral clock. And um, now all we need to do, we need to configure the control register, enable the FIFOs, set the baud rate, and set the format. So I'm just going to start with, uh, in my opinion, the hardest, which is the baud rate. And this would be a good time to grab that UART address. So uh, because we're using UART 0, we're going to use this address here. If you're using UART 1, you're going to want to uh, change this to an 8. Now to calculate the baud rate, they give us this uh, this very convenient formula. So um, in this example, they're using uh, 125 megahertz for the, uh, for the clock. But because we're using the crystal oscillator, we're going to have 12 megahertz. So just replace this with a 12 and um, just go through the formula and the numbers you should get should be six for the integer baud rate and 33 for the fractional baud rate. So now let's uh, enable the UART. So we'll load that uh, address in. So UART zero, read write. And then we'll move um, our integer baud rate, which is gonna be six, and then store that Add an offset of um, 24, so that's going to be uh, 9, and then move 33, and store that, and it should just be 1 above, so 10. So after we set the body rate, we're going to want to set the character frame length, and our uh, we want to enable our FIFAs. So now, go to uh, UART line control right here. And we want to set um, this field WLN and then FEN. So these, um, this will set our word length, and we want that to be eight bits. And we want to enable our FIFAs. So that's uh, let's see, that's bits four, five, and six. So that's going to be uh, one twelve. So one twelve, and then store that. And that is an offset of eleven. And that is our line control. And now the last thing to do is to actually enable our UART, which is going to be the register after. Now all that's left to do is enable both receive and transmit, and then enable the UART. So these are bits 8 and 9. So let's just uh, move a 3 into that, and then shift that over 8, and then add 1. And then we store that an offset of 12 words. And this should turn our uh, UART on. Now to send and receive data, let's create two functions. Uh, UART send. Now let's just call this UART zero send in case we want to use the other one. And UART zero receive. And let's uh, branch link. So now we'll just load that uh, the UART address in. And we're, we uh, care about two registers. We want uh, the flag register and the data register. So this is where we're going to send our data to. But before we do that, we want to make sure that the uh, FIFO is not full. 
So that is uh, this flag right here. So for our your, uh, send function, we're going to load, uh, if we assume that the data we want to send is an R0, let's load that your address into R1. And then we want the uh, we want this flag right here to make sure that the FIFO is not full. So if this is set, that means it is. So uh, that is an offset of six. So let's load into R2, R1, six. And then move into R3, that bit is going to be 32. And then and R2 and R3. And then if that bit is set, we're going to have to go back to the beginning. And then once that is clear, our data register is going to be uh, the very first one. So an offset of zero. So to make sure we're only sending eight bits, let's uh, and that by um, 255. So and R0, R2. And then we'll store R0 at R1 and offset of uh, zero. And that should be our data. And this is flag. And this is uh this is all we need to send data over UART, and then to receive, it's a uh, pretty much the same thing, but instead of um the full flag, we're going to watch this um here it go, uh flag register. We're gonna want to watch this bit, so we want to make sure that the FIFO is not empty. So let's call this receive. And this is going to be a 16. And instead of, um, we don't need this. And instead of storing it, we're going to load it. So this will load data from the UART into R0. So we will not be using both cores today. Um, I have not tried using uh, both cores over the same UART. Uh, that's probably why there's two of them. So uh, let's just call this test. And we'll uh, let's create a loop. So loop. And then we'll uh, receive from the UART, and then we'll uh, send it back. And this should um, so it, the uh, console should just be echoing whatever we send it. And then we'll just go back to loop. So on our end, to actually communicate with the UART, we're going to need software. So just open up a new terminal window. And uh, I'm going to be using Minicom. You can use whatever, but I feel like Minicom is like a great option just for like simple terminal use. So the command would be sudo minicom, and you want to select your device. And because mine's connected to over USB, it'll most likely be in TTY USB 0. And once that is up and running, uh, the only thing you need to configure, just do control A 0, and that should open up the options menu. And go to serial port setup and you uh, want to disable hardware flow control since we don't need that fancy stuff right now so disable that and then uh, control a is clear but um when you actually try to type anything because we haven't actually set up our uh, pico the uh, it won't do anything when we upload our code it should echo back to us So uh, yeah, that's um, and this is I I find this really cool. It's literally ASCII two in the truest sense. Backspace is literally just takes you back a space. It doesn't actually delete it, so you have to manually type over it. And then um, also when you press enter, it just takes you back to the beginning of the line, since the en uh, enter is really just the uh, escape uh, character for carriage return. So back in the old days of typewriters, uh, it literally just return the carriage back to the very front of the line so uh, you have to configure it so that when a when the uh, control the carriage return is sent over that it also sends over a new line character so the last thing I want to do this morning is create a uh, a integer to string function since I think this will be very useful in the future when we want to um, get actual like numbers back so let's uh, let's create a function called let's call it bin hex binary to hex because hexadecimal is very easy to uh to con it's very easy to convert binary to hexadecimal so now let's um let's push our link register on the stack at the very end we always pop it back into the pc 
and then um, we're going to move, let's say our, uh, our number is going to be an R0. So let's move that into R4, where we'll be safe. And then let's say R1 is the, uh, the length of that number in bits. So we'll move that into R5. And then let's, uh, we'll create a loop bin hex zero. And because each, uh, each hexadecimal character can, uh, show four bits, we'll just subtract R5 or subtract four from R5. And then we'll move whatever is in R4 back into R0. And then we'll shift it over, um, by whatever is in R5. So let's say if we want to, uh, our number is 16 bits long. We want the, the first thing we want to do is get the uh, last four. So we'll subtract four from 16, which is 12, and then shift it over. They'll give us the, uh, the most significant four bits. And now we'll want to and that with 15. So move 15, 15 into R1 and then and those together. And then we'll compare R0 with 9. So the idea is that if it's between 0 and 9, we'll use a uh, we'll use a number. If it's anything above that, we have to use a letter. So before I write that code, we'll want a uh, another symbol. So bin hex 2. And uh, there's going to be another symbol in between these. But for now, we'll um, this is going to be our uart send. So we'll send it over UART and then we'll compare uh, R5 with 0. And we'll branch. So if R5 is not 0, we'll just branch back, uh, back to our loop. As for the code in between here, um, so if uh, we'll branch if higher than. So if it's higher than 9, we'll branch to this. Uh, let's create a symbol bin hex 1 and uh, we need a character offset so the idea is if it's above 9 that's the letter and lowercase letters and ask you to start at 97 but uh, it would be easier because if it's if it's at least 10 then um, we'll start at 87 so we'll add 87 to r1 uh, to r0 so when it sends it over uh, the data will be um, anywhere between lowercase a and lowercase f so we'll branch to that. Else we'll just um, we'll just add 48, which is where the numbers start. And then after that we'll uh, jump to the uh, hex 2 symbol. So the idea is in the loop, uh, we subtract 4 every time we loop around. Uh, check if it's above 9. If it is, we add the uh, letter character offset else we add the uh, number character offset and then after that we'll send it over UART and if the uh, if the count is not zero we'll just go back to the loop and if it is zero then we uh, pop our link register into the PC so now to test this out instead of this uh, UART send we will uh, return the hex value of our character and we'll want uh, 8 bits Quick array. Uh, I had this as left shift. Uh, this should be right shift. So then, once you got that, just send over your code. And now, when we type, we get the ASCII two values. So A, B, C. Now we get 61, 62, 63. Um, yeah. So this would be. This is a great method to uh, send over uh, number values. We'll definitely be using this function in the future.